Hi everyone, let's take a look at the following physics kinematics example. A pedestrian is running at its maximum speed of 6 meters per second trying to catch a bus that is stopped at a traffic light. When he is 16 meters from the bus, the light changes and the bus pulls away from the pedestrian with the acceleration of 1 meter per second square. Part A. Does the pedestrian catch the bus and, if so, how far does he have to run? If not, what is the pedestrian's distance of closest approach? Part B, how fast is the bus moving when the pedestrian catches it or at the distance of the closest approach? So step one, draw a diagram. What you would like to see on a line are three major points. The first one's going to be where the starting point is for the pedestrian. And of course, the second point is Let's say here, the location of the bus, which is going to be at some traffic light. Again, not all traffic lights are vertical. Some are horizontal, depending on, I guess, your location. And last but not least is where the pedestrian and the bus will meet. And again, this is an assumption. We don't know for sure if they're going to meet. Let's assume they do. And we can call this distance x. And of course, Based on the paragraph, uh, the distance from the pedestrian to the actual bus uh, was 16 meters before the traffic light turned from red all the way to green. Now, there are two major concepts here, and the first one is the kinematic formula, d equals to v1t plus half a t squared. Now, you want to be mindful because there are two ways of looking at this. The first idea is called constant motion, or you can say... Um, constant velocity and in this scenario what that means is there's no acceleration so the distance that we're thinking about is simply going to be v1t and specifically in this example this is how we refer to the pedestrian because again for your reference I'll use a different color for you it says um, the pedestrian is moving at six meters per second square six meters uh, per second. Sorry, not six meter per second square, six meters per second. That's what I meant. And of course, you know, what does that really mean? Well, the pedestrian is traveling from here all the way to here. So the total distance or displacement is going to be 16 plus x. And of course, in terms of the initial velocity, it's going to be six meters per second or six times t. And when we come back to this, now I'm going to draw a line in the middle, divide this into two different columns. The second major concept is called uh, speeding up, or um, maybe a better way to describe it is some type of acceleration. Doesn't always have to be, have to be speeding up, uh, but in this scenario, what happens is the bus started at a traffic light. So the initial velocity for the bus is gonna be zero. Again, we're still using the same starting point, d equals to v1 times t plus half a t squared. The major difference is since the velocity is going to be zero at the beginning because you're at a traffic light and you're stopping and when the traffic light goes from red to green you're now moving so it's going to be half a t square a is going to be one again how do we know that we're going to go back and use this another color for you the uh school bus here is moving at one meter per second square and of course Unlike the first case, the distance that the bus will uh, cover or travel is going to be x units in this case, or x meters. So it's going to be x equal to half times 1 t squared. So now the, the difficult part is over because you're looking at two equations with two unknowns. There's so many ways of solving this. One method is to look at this and say x equals a half times times square. You can take this entire expression and plug it into here. Now, that's not the only method, of course. That's just one way to solve it. So now you can say 16 plus half times t square equals to 6 times t. And of course, you can multiply everything by 2. And of course, this is equal to. When you multiply everything by 2, that's going to be 32, which equals to, you should say 32 plus t square equals to 12t. If you bring it to one side, what happens is you have t squared minus 12t plus 32 equal to 0. You always start with factoring. And if factoring does not work, you can move forward to the quadratic formula. But in this case, by inspection, if you look at the factors of 32, 
such that it will give you a sum of negative 12, I would say t minus 4 times t minus 8 uh, seems to work. This implies, again, time is going to be 4, 4 seconds. Remember, you want to find out when they meet, right? So even though 8 seconds may be a second mathematical response, but the first point of contact is going to be 4 seconds later. Now, what does that really mean? If you think about the distance, again, that's going to be half, and I'm coming back to this formula here. So it's going to be half times 4 squared. If you do a little bit of mental math, 16 divided by 2 is 8. So what this means is there's two ways to look at this. You can say the pedestrian, which really covers x plus 16, that's going to be 24 meters. So one way to answer part A is, uh, does the pedestrian catch the bus? Yes. How far? Well, from the beginning all the way to the point of contact would be 24 meters. Or another way of looking at it is you can say it's 8 meters away from the traffic light. So again, there are two answers depending on your frame of reference. One of them would be 24 meters from the beginning or 8 meters from the traffic light, depending on which reference you're thinking about. Now, in part B, they're asking how fast is the bus moving when the pedestrian catches it. So we want to find out how fast. There's another kinematic formula, V2 equals to V1 plus A times T. And in this scenario, the initial velocity again is zero. We know the acceleration is one meter per second square, and time is going to be exactly uh, four seconds. So the school bus, not the school bus, and the bus is moving at four meters per second at the time of contact. If you find this video meaningful, is adding value to your physics life, please comment, like, share, and subscribe. I hope this makes sense.